ladies and gentlemen, this is Patricia Rose once again, and we are working on a new video, and it is called How to Sculpt a Sexy Lady Doll. And um, I have chosen this particular um, picture. I got it off the internet, and at the very end of this um, video, I will actually give you the link where you can purchase these. And it's a really wonderful, it's a virtual pose kind of um, situation where the model is turned from all different directions. Um, if you can see the pictures in the background, um, she's on a turntable. And you can get the entire pose all the way around. So you can work three-dimensional as opposed to flat two-dimensional. You know, like if you were just trying to sculpt it from this one picture. That's difficult. What do you do on the back side? You're a three-dimensional artist. Okay, so what I've done is this part right here, this little doll, I have uh, roughed it in. She's approximately seven and a half inches. And um, I have done her in a different clay than I normally work in, although Pro Sculpt is my still favorite. Um, I, what I do is I mix a few clays together to get an even um, better effect as far as the luminosity, if that's such a word, um, for the, the sheer, the, the glow of the doll. And you can see it in a lot of my work. I, I, it looks totally different. Let me show you right here. Um, if you'll move into these two dolls, this, this is um, a silky that I did not too long ago on eBay, totally naked, um, but we've got most of her covered up, okay. Anyhow, um, she's in all ProSculpt light, and um, she is, she's kind of opaque looking, she doesn't have a, a glow to her a lot like this one does. If you can see, I put a little cernet. And um, a lot of times I'll put um, either Fimo translucent clay or a real pale Cernet or one of the Cernets, the, there's a Cernet that has a, a little sparkle to it and it's really kind of pretty. And you add it and the, the proportion um, of it is, let's see, I make little balls of clay and I have approximately seven little balls of ProSculpt. Usually I use the light, I don't care for the medium anymore. Um, because it just shows moonies too much. Uh, and then seven balls of ProSculpt to one ball uh, equal sizes of the um, Cernet or the Fimo Transparent. My favorite is the Fimo Transparent. Okay, so, um, and they have it in two different shades. It comes in kind of a, um, an almond color, the transparent, and it comes in a real white. I use the almond. Uh, unless they start with a darker clay and want to lighten it some more and then I add the white to it. So this is another little doll that I did on uh, eBay not too long ago and the owner is still waiting for it so I've got to hurry up and make this video so I can send it off to her. Okay. Um, and in this film that we're going to do on this particular doll, uh, on this particular video, I am only going to teach you how to sculpt. Um, first thing you want to do, we're going to start with the head, so we need a little stick to start with. Sometimes I have them with a little head ball on the end. You can or don't have to use it, it doesn't make any difference. The little head ball is pulled, the whole thing is pushed through the head and up in order to make, let me show you, a ball, a hole on the inside of the head. And the reason you do that is because we're going to have tons of hair coming up out of that little head and there's nowhere to put it, you know. You don't want the bulk on the outside of the, the, um, the skull. So um, then you can just use a plain stick. That's going to work either way. But what I have to do first is condition the clay. And you want to cut. This is called a rib. And I showed it in another, a lot of other videos, but we're making a few repeats so that your girls and guys get it right. We're just going to cut it thin like cheese. And be very, very careful because I've cut myself on this thing. It's easy because it has flex in it. So just straight down. And then we're going to work it up. And we're going to smash it and smash it until it's real smooth and pliable. Okay. After you've worked up your clay, make a little ball. And I've got a little neck on it, if that's what you want to call that. <laughs> And just stick it right in there. Oops, maybe not that far. Okay, and then you decide on the front of the face, which obviously you know is going to have more out the front with the chin and everything. So that's the front, and I'm going to flatten it. And try to get all the lines off now. Any little indentation, remove it now. And always start with a big X. Marks the spot. 
and you're going to measure from side to side, from top to bottom, make an X, dead center. Okay. Um, a female lady, adult lady, will generally have her eyes at the center. The pupils would be right there. Okay, I'm going to make them a little deeper, like I show in my other video. There are some of you that won't buy that. They'll just buy this, and so that's why I'm going through this a little bit. And tap it down. I'm going to work upside down so the camera can see everything. I'm going to move just a little bit back towards the light. That probably helps a little bit, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to roll across the center of the nose bridge. Deepen these a little bit. Smash it on the sides. Now, I have this little doll back here that I've gotten started as a, um, a guide for you to see how big this thing's going to be. See, I'm already too big. Her face is just too wide. But, you know, inevitably, um, it can be trimmed down on the sides. Um, and you can see, if I don't know, I guess you can see the different types of clay that I've used. This one has a sheen to it while you're working on it. This is pure ProSculpt, and this has Cernet in it. And that one over there, the lady uh, in the, with the crown, she has, um, I think she has the female translucent in it. So it's all different, but use something that's going to make it easier to sculpt. ProSculpt by itself is really wonderful, but if you just add just a tiny bit of the other stuff, it makes it go so much faster because smoothing goes like that, you know. Okay, we're going to make um, more lines. Okay, so here's her eye level. Okay, if you take on a grown woman, and this is what this is, this is not um, a 18 year old or 14 year old or anything that I've done before, but you want to take from the center of the eye halfway down from here to there, divide it in half, that's the bottom of the nose. And in the middle of that, that's where the mouth line goes. And so all you do is you're going to figure out where your tear ducts are going to be. You don't want your, you don't want your eyes too close together because it doesn't look intelligent. All right. Well, that's what they say, anyhow. I'm just repeating what I say. I heard. <laughs> Mine are too close together, but I'm living with it. Okay, just make a line straight down, and that is as wide out on the sides as you need to go with your nose wings. Nose wings are those little places where your nose holes are going, you know, on the sides. But um, you don't want to do that yet. But what I'm finding is the prettier the lady, and you'll notice on this one, Look how narrow her nose is and how wide her face is. So when we get down to working on the nose, we're going to make it even smaller than this one. See how much tinier that nose is on the right hand side here? That's a big difference. It, that's one of the things that makes it really feminine. Don't we wish we could all have a small nose? Okay. All right. So we're going to smash in. That's what I do. Everything's by depression and submission as opposed to adding clay. Because once you've added clay, you are creating little air bubbles underneath the surface of that. And you will not be able to get them out sometimes without punching a hole in it and then you make another mark. Let's see, I'll show you. Okay, let's say there was a Mooney on the back side of this doll's head and I punch a little hole to get the air out. That's how you release it, okay? Then you have to go back and push around on it, push around on it. Look, I'm still seeing that little bitty dot there. I hope the camera can see it. Yeah, and it's just, sometimes you trap more air in there. So the best thing to do is start with a solid ball of clay, just like I did. I rolled it out, and I depress everything. You're not adding, clay, adding amunis to it or trapped air. So I'm going to tap this up just a little bit. See, you don't have to add any clay to this to make a little nose. Okay, we're just going to pat it together. Remember, there's your bottom line, and you don't want it to go down any further. That doesn't mean that her nose goes all the way down to there. That's the little part between the nostrils that hangs down that low, because the nostrils may be up a little bit further. And um, if you get the uh, video that I have on detailed faces, you'll see how to do children's noses, and it's just so much more different because the special relationship is... Um, up higher, everything's, well, it's not up higher, the whole um, eyes, nose, and mouth are down lower on the face. They're all on the bottom half. They're not at the bot the half line. Okay. So, 
I'm going to start making her a little tiny nose right now. And uh, things like if you leave this line, that is a hard line. You do not want that. Okay, let's just, I uh, remember where my, I barely see it, but it's still there, the little dot where the pupil would be. So I'm going to make the bottom line. Now, of course, there's a lot more refinement to it, but you'll see it at the very end of this. We've only got like eight minutes to do this little face. So, all right. And then I want to do the lid on the top. And the lid is very narrow on the corners, higher in the center, but not too high because everybody does it wrong. They always make them too high based on what I'm looking at, all of your, all of your work. So, okay, and push this in just a little bit on each side. We're doing a skinny on this, okay? All right, now I want to smash in on the sides now. So she starts looking human. You don't really need to cut on it or um, you know, remove clay or anything. Just feather it back if it's too big. Now this would be an amateur line. A brow line on that is like Comagnum Man. You don't want a Neanderthal look on a pretty woman. So always smooth that out. And next year we're going to actually have um, a video on expressions. So you guys can learn to do all these things. Like if you want to make her mad or sad, you just raise things like this. But I'm not going to do that now. Okay, um, feather that out. Okay, and you want to look at her from the side. I hope you can see it well. And really make this down deep. But the the <clears throat> where you come in at is right here. You don't have it way down here. If you have a depression way down here, you've got a child's nose. A lady's going to have a higher bridge on her nose right there. Okay. And um, let's get busy thinning it up some more before I spend any more time on the detailing because that's just a wasted time when we end up wiping it out once we've come to the next point. And so I want to put a depression on each side. See what I'm doing? The brow line is now there. It's not way high over here and hard. It's real smooth. And um, you're going to bring it down on the corners to make it more realistic. Okay. Now the nose, it actually has, like they say, ski nose. Okay. You want a nice little plane right down the center of it that's narrow. This is to be a feminine nose. You can have a wider nose if you want, but this is a really pretty feminine. Okay, and on each side of the nose, it's going to have a depression. This, which, this is what makes the nose wings, basically. Quite a bit right in here. And once again, you're going to smooth it back. And I have all kinds of little detailing brushes that um, work for the smoothing thing. The smaller you get, the more you're going to end up using brushes. You can actually sculpt with brushes, and sometimes I do if it's tiny. So, it's, she's a little wonky looking, you know, but she'll we'll get her cleaned up in a little bit. Okay, oh, so on the bottom lip, uh, we're going to put a little depression underneath there. Hmm, I don't know if that's going to give her enough chin or not. Well, here's one way to get some more chin. Just squeeze it together. <laughs> okay. Then tap up on this. Just a little bit. Tap down on this. And uh, she's got man lips, which are kind of thin. Men have thin lips. Women want really big collagen lips. <laughs> oh, baby. I wish I had big, thick lips. My, my daughter has. They're beautiful. But I did get them. Okay. Then you want to put a depression on each side of the mouth like this. For a little rosebud uh, lips. You want to make a little thing in the middle. Not too much. Not too much. And to round everything up, you're going to use um, little brushes. See, all these are little hard lines. Everything's a hard line. And everybody, um, well, not everybody, I'm saying... I've seen a lot of stuff on eBay and 
other websites of doll artists, and they just stop before they do all the detailing, you know, and the detailing is what makes it more lifelike. And you have to smooth it out. The detailing is all in the brushes. Okay. Okay, and we got down to the bottom of the nose here. We're at that point. She still got a little bit much right through here, so I'm going to lessen it. And that's better. Okay, now you want to get your smallest stylist and you're going to make some tiny little nose holes and don't flare them out too much now. They only take a little bit. And the little thing in the middle, the little divot between there, is a lot smaller than most people think it is. Okay, then you want to put a line like this on each side of the top of the nose. She has like ballerina nose holes, little flaring nostrils there. <laughs> okay, that is the basics of what you want to do in a matter of minutes for a face. Now, I can sit here, and I will sometimes, sit here for an hour and play around with it. You know, make some depressions here, smooth it out, make her smile a little bit more. But the basics are, we're concentrating on the body on this one because we haven't shown, I haven't shown how to do a real feminine body yet. Um, we have a little mermaid girl, and we have a little fairy girl, and we have a baby. This is our lady video. See? You can sculpt with these little brushes and feather it out. That's her face. Um, this is 22 gauge wire. I use that on um, about an 8 inch doll. And these are wire cutters. For those of you who do not know what they are, they're fancy and you don't need fancy ones like this. Okay, you want to cut enough wire and leave yourself a lot of slack. I'm going to measure it on this ruler right here. I've got 11 inches or more on each side. I'm not going to use that much, obviously. I'm on an 8 inch doll. Um, what I've done is I've simplified this, and you should start with this particular doll this way. Um, her head is a little bit less than an inch, just a smidge. So if I make her somewhere between 7.5 and, and 8, it'll be just perfect. Okay. So you start with a head, and that way you'll know what the rest of the body size is going to be worked out. Because sometimes it's really hard to do the head. So I do it this way. I just twist a loop in the top because that's going to end up going in the oven or hanging like this little doll in the background here. Um, and then I work my way down. And I want quite a bit, so out the top of her head. So, and then you've got to figure her head and her neck's in there, and it, this has to go all the way down to what would be her heart. So I would think that's probably about two inches. Yeah. So, oh yeah, that's plenty. Okay. So then you want to cut another piece. That's going to be the arms. And we're going to cut it long. It's always better to have too much than not enough when you first start out. Okay, and I'm going to put it in the center, right across the top here, and I'm going to flip one leg over the arm and bring it back down, and flip the other leg over her arm and bring it back down, and then join it together, and voila, we've made a heart. Um, and if you think that's quite not enough um, for you as far as... Um, you're worried about the armatures coming out, just flip the arm around, one or the other. One will, that's all you need, just one of them. You don't need a whole bunch of bulk in there. And don't use paper tape on it. And keep it simple. That's what my whole theory of teaching is. There is a simplified way of doing everything. Less is more. Less complicated is far more easier to do. Okay, her head is there. She's going to be down to about here. So I'm going to take her down a little bit more, and I'm going to give her a little hip joints. Here, here's what we're doing right here. This is what it's going to look like, well, sort of, when I'm finished. And um, I actually am going to put the little um, brass tube on the end. I'm going to show you how I do that. I sell them on um, my website and eBay. 
um, the a little armature already done, but heck, this is nothing. You guys can do this. I'm going to show you how to do it. Save yourself 15 bucks. Okay. That's about right. See, this one's seven and a half, and I want a little bit longer, so I'm just make it a little bit longer, a couple more twists, and I'll have an eight inch body. Okay, and then you just make a little hip joint. It can be not as pretty as you want, but it'll work. Okay, and figuring that her head is, um, she got a neck. And you got a little head. Her head's going to be about right up to here. So now I'm going to put her down and I'm going to see how much I need to make an 8 inch doll. And that is about it. Let me measure it on this one. Make sure. Yep, that's exactly right. See, I put the two little hearts together. Excuse that nail. Two little hearts together. Got a little more room in the torso, a little bit more up above. And I'm going to leave a little more. Um, down below the length of this one. So, yeah, I'm right on it, right there. Okay. And I'm just going to cut off one side at this point, and I will show you why shortly. Because we're going to attach that little rod on the other side. Okay, this is just, um, gosh, I think they call it, jeez. It's a brass rod. I bought it at a hardware store, and you can get a specialty hardware store, and you can get it all over the place. It's not as difficult to find as you think. And I'm not sure what the exact size is, but if you write me later, I will tell you. Uh, I think it's one eighth inch. I think that's what it is. Okay. And what I've done is I've cut off a piece of this like so, and it it's a bit it's a bit tricky to do. And then once you've done this unless you use the right tool. You can cut it with a like a hacksaw and or um, um, most of your husbands will know how to find a tool that works with this. Cut off any length that you want and this little rod, which here's once cut and the holes are opened back up again, it's going to go on the bottom of this thing and see I don't want to cut this one off until I measure this exactly the same way. You want the feet to be the same height. This has to come through the very bottom of the foot so that you can put a nail in it that's going to hold the doll up. The nail now will go in a base. Okay? So, and um, if you look at your photograph, and you should start with photos, um, I have one weight bearing leg in this situation, and the other one, and that means her leg is going to be really straight. I mean, her whole body on that side is, and then this one you can do anything you want to with, but this is where her support's going to be because we do not want a stand showing. And this is the only way that I like to do it. So what I'm going to do is, knowing that that's going to go on there like that, you and you have a nail that goes up in it from this angle, so you can't have the wire go all the way down into that. So you've got to cut it off a little further up. So I'm going to cut it off right about there. And there she goes. Okay. Then I will put this on there, making sure that they are the same length of the feet again. Then take your tool, pliers any kind, and squash it down really hard. And it's not going anywhere. Okay? Now, when you play her up, put her leg and everything on, she's hollow about halfway through this rod. And then I'm going to put this little nail in anywhere I want to on this base. And then I cut the top of the nail off. And it sticks right over top of that. And she can stand. Now you need to do this. You need to decide your base before you start the doll. And get this all prepared. Because if you don't, um, you're not going to have a way of testing her. And you want to test her. Um, while you're making her, while she's still in soft clay. You want to put it down and make sure her foot is in the exact position so that it's flush on the base. This is very important. So, that is how you make an armature. Okay, do they look like they are the same? It's in her right leg, so I've just established right now that this is the front of the body. So just remember that. <laughs> okay, uh, and the ob obviously the arms are going to be too long, but we'll worry about that as we're building the clay. So I cut those off later to make sure I have enough um, wire on the arm. Okay, so that is how it goes. See, there won't be any stand showing.
we're actually going to start on the torso now and I'm going to show you a few little tricks that I have to stabilize the doll if you know your pose. Now if you do not have a pose in mind you can't do this because you may have to move her around but if you know the pose and you make an under armature made out of clay and you fire it on there then you will be so much it'll be so much easier to do because the piece won't be moving around on you as much. I'm not going to put tons of clay on it, just enough to get it started. And I'm going to fire it on. Now, if you look at my pose, here it is right here. She's got a stationary leg, her weight-bearing leg, and her hips out just a bit. So, and this one's going to be bent like about there. Yeah, something like that. I don't make a armature, um, a wire that goes um, all the way to the bottom of the foot because you may have to change that around. And once the arm, the um, wire is in the bottom of the foot, it becomes a nightmare if you try to change the position of the foot. So, and the same thing with the hands. I make the wire all the way down to basically the wrist area right here, or just a little bit into this area, but not any further than that because it it seems like it always raises this ugly little head. In, in the worst places when <laughs> you're trying to make it look pretty and it's got this wire in it. Okay, so um, I'm going to fire this. Just add a little more. You know that she's going to have clay here. So I positioned the wire the way I want it. And you don't have to be real artsy with this because it's not going to show. But you want to put a little bit all the way down the leg. It'll make it so much easier. She won't have wiggly legs while you're trying to build on it. Um, while I'm working on this, let me tell you, there's a few things you can do to condition your clay. Uh, we had to go off camera and squash this clay. Whew, it's tough, let me tell you. But um, if you have clay that's too soft, you can do what they call leach it. And leaching, basically, is you cut um, slices just like I did earlier, cheese slices, and you put it between two pieces of white clean paper, typing paper, whatever you want to use for your printer and everything, uh, and it will leach out some of the oil, and that's what it's in. It's, it's got a plasticizer of some sort. I'm probably not even using the right word, but it's this is plastic. This is what this is, and um, that will absorb some of that oil, and that oil is what makes it too soft. Now, if it's going the other direction and the clay is too hard, they have a, um, a little bottle of the plasticizer that you can buy. I don't sell it, but you can get it um, with Jack Johnston at his website. It's www.artdolls.com, and I think it's like $2.50 for a little bottle, and you only use just a few little drops of it um, with a big bunch of clay and really, really work it in, and that's all there is to it, and your clay will be just soft, like just brand new. Or if you have a food processor, you can actually um, blend in, blend all that up into little, they're tiny little pieces, and uh, then put some Cernet or some uh, Fimo translucent clay in it, like I said earlier, and that will soften it up too. So, but you don't want it too soft. Remember, okay, here, here's all we got, and this is all we need to make the position to make it hard. So I'm going to take an embossing gun and you can buy these at any craft store for around $25 to $30 and you have to be very careful now because you don't want to burn yourself and so you keep your fingers away from it and you just do a little piece at a time and see how far back I am? Well if you go closer you can make a burn spot just in no time and, you, and it takes a while for it to heat up, just about a half a minute and then it'll start cooking right on there. And even if you burn it on this part, it's not going to matter because it's not going to show because we're going to build clay on top of it. But we want it hard enough so it'll stay stationary. Here we have the um, under armature uh, fired on with an embossing gun. It's not a heat gun. There is a big difference between the two. And so I'm going to start building on this now. And you don't have to make it really all that 
um, squashed on right this at this time. Just kind of feather it in the best you can. You got something stable in there to work with. It's really nice now. The thing's not going to wail around on you. Now the embossing gun, you don't want to get too close when you're doing things like fingers and faces because what happens is it makes it, if you're just trying to get it, you know, lightly fired so before it goes in the oven so that you know that nothing's going to move around in there like the position of the foot or a hand or something, um, you don't want to get too close with the embossing gun because what happens is it makes the surface of whatever it is too close to go real shiny. Um, almost transparent in some cases. <laughs> so, yeah, if you were to start with transparent um, Fimo and fire it up really, really close, you end up with clear amber. It's really a cool effect if y'all want to do crowns or something to that nature. In addition to this, I'm writing a book, by the way, and I hope to have it out next year. And uh, I've got a couple publishers already interested in it. And if uh, we can't get together, I might just self-publish. And then I'll just have them on my website. Okay. Now, behind me, I have all of these photos on the walls that um, I printed out from that website that I belong to. And when you join it, um, you can actually do the same thing and use them as patterns. And if you can reduce them or enlarge them um, on a copy machine or whatever, um, I'm going to show you how this, how these are. Okay, um, you're going to be able to do it exactly the same as the doll that you're working on. See where I'm going with this? See now, she's got one arm, her shoulders down lower. Okay, so I'm going to put it right there because that's where the shoulder goes. And then the other one, right here. And I'm not going to bend the um, elbow and everything yet because we're way ahead of ourselves if we do that. So we want to make sure that we get the stance right. So her stance is, she's got a little more going this way. And this one's down further. So I'll just lower this one. Here we go. See, it's going to have too much weight right now. But, so, see, here's my first problem. I'm already seeing that this isn't going to touch, okay? So, but that's okay, because if you'll notice, her foot is off the ground. So I have it in the right position. So this is the part that touches, and there's no rod in the bottom part of that foot, so it's okay. So all I need to do is when I build that foot up, this is going to be like come down the middle of her, of her leg, straight down into her heel almost, and then... The um, other part of the foot, the toes and everything, will be out a little bit further, so it'll be just right. So, happy accident, that's what I call that. So, I'm going to sit here and build this and build this, and then when I have a little something else to show you, I will be on film again. Okay, um, well, we're back on the body, and... Mm. While I was off camera, I noticed I hadn't covered up something that needed starred. <laughs> so I went back and fixed a few of my photos. So if you saw the first part, I'm sure your husbands will love that, but that wasn't my intention. I, I want to do this as a classic kind of thing, not a pornography kind of thing. Okay, but anyhow, now that she has her star. Um, okay, what I've done is I've tried to build it up just as close as I could to that body. Um, and if you'll notice, she has um, a lot of the weight uh, on this leg. So that means that her um, waist right here is going to have a little indentation in it. Uh, and all the pictures have all the keys for it. Right here is a little depression where it's where the thigh is, joins to the body. And if you'll see right here, I'm putting that in right there. Okay. And then um, right here, she has a... Um, bone and a depression on this part. So you know what I've done so far? I have not picked up a tool. This is the first time I've picked up a tool on this doll other than her face. So you want to put, let's see, plain lines here. I'm not doing anything gross, girls and boys. All right. Depression. And there is a bone right here. It's flattened out more or less right there in that section. So come out that way with it. 
I don't know all the terms of the bones and the muscles, but I don't think you'll want to learn them either. This is just too much fun. If you just know where it is, you can indicate it, and that's good enough. I don't want to do a real muscular kind of figure. Um, eventually, I will do a male, but for right now, I'm sticking to females because they're so much more fun, and there's, you, there's more fat on their body, and you don't have to know all the bones and the muscles, although I do know them, but I don't know what they're called. So, yeah, I'm going to build up a little tummy. And you can see it on the photos. Let's see which one. Um, this one has somewhat of a little bit of a belly. I don't want to put much, but just enough to indicate that she's, uh, you know, she's got a little pooch there. Okay. And um, what I've done is I started building on the back side. I said, ooh, I better not do that while I'm off camera. I've got to show you girls how to do this. So um, the bottom's always bigger than you think it is. And it's up higher than you think it is. And if it hangs down low, oh, honey, she needs to go on a diet. Um, but anyhow, and another thing is the section in the middle between on the butt, it's not a big crevice. And I have seen so many people do this, and they have this big crevice, and then it goes down into it. That is incorrect. It's not down into it. It's built up in the middle as well. Now watch this. And everybody makes the same mistake. Fill it in. Fill it in. It's just like the same on her breasts. They're not just two huge mountain peaks. You know, there's cleavage in the middle. Well, in most cases. Yeah. Yeah. Fill it in first. Get it as high as you want to on both sides. Tuck it in. Feather it out. And the uh, little butt crack is not as long as you think it is. It doesn't go way up the back. It's, it's pretty low, actually. Let's try to center it. Now just take your tool and tap into it. That looks a little more realistic. Okay, we're going to need a little more clay on the side over here. And a lot of this you can do just with your fingers. You don't even need a tool for a while yet. But things like um, under here, you're going to want to bring a line out halfway, not all the way out, just halfway. And then take that and smooth it out into that line underneath. See how easy that is? I'll do the other one. So you got a little much right here. So that has to go down into the leg. I'm awful quiet. You probably wonder where I am. I get in deep deep in thought in these things. Sometimes. I just found it was real relaxing to sculpt. Sometimes, especially if you know the anatomy, you don't even have to think about what you're doing. After a while, it just becomes second nature. Especially if you do it over and over and over again. In the female form, I've done over and over and over again. Okay, now. Um, on her, she has a little bit of an indentation. I don't think you can see that much. Her, her butt does not stick out on the sides like oftentimes you girls do. It's got a flat spot, so we're going to make a flat area on both sides so that the hip goes all the way straight down. You don't see a little butt sticking out the side. It's nice and even. Okay, there is a piece of flesh back here that's a big hunk that's missing and where the depressions go, so I'm going to stick in some clay and feather it in. There's like a little dimple here, right there and right there, and we're going to start making a spinal column. And I need to add a little bit more on the shoulders. 
I got one shoulder blade kind of worked in that part of her back. I didn't do this side because I wanted to show you. Okay. All right. It always takes more clay than you think it does. I try not to add too much after I've got it pretty much worked in, especially little pieces. If you can put a big piece on like this, you can uh, alleviate the moonies. But if you go and put little teeny pieces in, you're asking for trouble. Mm. Try to get as much on there or more than you think you need. It's easier to carve down into it than to add. It's not easier, but it's just more effective to eliminate uh, problems. Okay, you have a little more back here. I'm trying to balance her out. If you're going to put a costume on the doll that has a tight-fitted waist, my advice to you is plan it out before you even get this far in the sculpting. Um, you can't always carve out on the waist. See, the bulk of the fabric is going to make the doll look real unnatural. You know, if you have a gathered skirt or something, um, it's always going to look prettier if the gathers are real tight to the waist. Okay, and in order to do that, with fabric being as bulky as it is, you almost have to cut out like this. It's serious. Of course, all the way around. I'm only going to go part of it. And taper this. And then when you... <laughs> my dog's growling. Um, and then when you put your fabric up inside of there, all the bulk will be held, hid, and you just have a little um, fabric draped out. And gathered up. It looks so much prettier. Okay, but we're not going to do that. But that is one of the things you need to do at this stage. Um, and if you forget it, you can always carve it out after the doll is fired. But it takes a whole lot longer. You notice how fast that went. But um, yeah, carving out's a little trickier. Plus, you take a chance in breaking your doll. Okay, dimples right here. And have a tendency to over-exaggerate first, which I'm sure all of you do first, um, and then go back and smooth things out. And that's a little over-exaggerated, but you know where it is. And when, at the end of this, I'll show you. It'll all be tucked in and real pretty. Okay. Let's work around to the front. Um, I've got to do this side over here. Uh, I've got to put a little more. If you'll notice, the hip bone on this side is not as defined or as big as the hip bone in here. This is a little too big. I'll work on that, too. She needs more thigh on the front to balance that out. The butt's probably okay right about now, but it's definitely not enough thigh. Now, here we have enough thigh and not enough hip on the top. So, okay, let's work our way down to the knee real quick. we got to... Um, Um, put a little patch more in there. Okay. Looking straight down the leg from here, straight down. It gets narrower completely. It doesn't dip in there. I used to make this mistake, by the way. Um, it dips in, and it, it doesn't. It's not right. If you really look at the human form, it's wide all the way down, and it narrows at the ankle. Um, it tapers, of course, but there is no dip in. Be sure you don't make that mistake because it is not going to look natural. So here I am. I'm putting more clay in that very place I'm telling you about because that's where I'm going wrong. We can go back and fix all that stuff later. But see, it goes and has a little bit of a pooch right here and an indentation right here. smooth out the front right down here, which this is where the bone is, right on the top. So we're going to push this towards the center where the bone is indicated. You do everything with your fingers, pretty much. Okay, let's work on the knee. Okay, I'm picking up the tool now. I'm going to flatten out one area. She doesn't, she's not a real muscular doll, uh, a person in the photos. She's kind of um, nondescript in a way. She's sexy because she's got big breasts and a beautiful neckline and nice form to her, but she doesn't have a lot of, um, she's pretty young, so she doesn't have a lot of definition in some places. She's got a little more fat on her, like baby fat. 
So I'm going to put it in. I'm going to show you where it is. There's a line over top of where the knee is. There's a bone right here on the side. You can have to build it up just a smidge probably. See it? don't know if you can see it or not. Okay, and then this comes in this way, like so. There's actually a little dip right about here. Looks like old, ma old lady take, doesn't it? <laughs> but that's okay. And it dips in here. And it is bulkier on this side, right over there. Can you see that? Where it has, um, it comes out, it goes, the way a leg is, it goes, it dips in, hot comes out, dips in, comes out, dips in, comes out, and then goes straight until you get to the ankle. So, and on this side, it's got more bulk. I'm probably going to put a little bit more up in here or feather this out in to make this nice and rounded, like so. Then it dips in. Then you've got the little bone sticking out right there. Then it dips in again, and then it goes straight to the ankle. So it's in and out and in and out. And all you got to remember is where those little dips are, and you can make it look realistic. Okay, now, that I've over-exaggerated the knee so that you can see where that definition is, but now we need to tone it down to make it more feminine. That's the whole key to making anything feminine. You've just got to smooth things out. Now well, that's better. I mean, it still looks like knee. And she's got a little bit of a bend to it, so we're going to push it like so. And we're going to work on the back side now. And what I'm doing is I'm going to put a dent on each side. And there is a crease over the top of it, but there's like a little bulk just above it, just a little tiny one that you wouldn't normally notice. But I'll stick it in there. Oh, I'm adding clay. Shame on me. But sometimes you got to do it. Okay, so that gives me my little indentation across there. See his little piece of fat right there. Okay, you got a dent right here, right beside that bone. See that bone on the side? Okay, and a dent over here. And see how. <clears throat> it's bulkier out this way. It's still not bulky enough. It's got a little more meat on the back side of the leg, right in there. And I'm going to show you an illustration now on the wall that will indicate just that very same thing. It's on the other leg, though, but we'll go back and do that in a minute, okay? Um, right here, you can see the dent on the sides. The little bulk right back here on the back side. And on the picture on next to it over here, do the same thing. See a little dent through there, a little bulk right here. And uh, we're working on this part right here, but on the other leg. So I don't think I have a picture of that angle of it. Hmm, must have missed one. Okay, and so here I am doing this on the back side. And she's got a little more bulk on the calf, too. See, remember I said from the front side it dips in here and it bulks out there? It looks really grotesque right now. It's hard to hold on this thing, too. Hold on. Now I'm going the right way. Okay. Let's gather it in. Here's your line. The basics are all there. All the rest of this is just a smother of smoothing it out. Okay, let me do this. Losing my line. Once again, I've over-exaggerated so I can show you where it all is. Now, you want to go and smooth all of this in. So you just get an indication of a line, not a big line. Indication of a dip, not a huge dip. 
Yeah, my favorite term is indicate, don't exaggerate. Yeah, they'll probably put that on my, on my epitaph, on my headstone, on my, on my tombstone, rather. Or the other one I say all the time. All my students do this very same thing. They go in and they are detailing before they have all the basics in. And so I say, draw the forest in before you detail the leaves. <laughs> because you end up losing half of it anyhow when you go back to straighten things out, which you didn't have right in the first place. See just how, how much easier that is once you get it, you get the right things in the right place? Okay, we're working our way down the ankle. And this is the foot that's going to be raised somewhat. I gave her a little more meat right here probably than what she has in the photo, but all you have to do is smooth it all, smooth, smooth it out if, it, if it's too much for you. Uh, on the side of the leg, there is an indication. Let me see if I can find a photo with one. Yeah, okay. Um, this photo right here, you can see it, a small bit of an indication of a line here. Or, let's see, another one would be here. Here's a good one right here. You can just barely see it on the photos, but when you really get um, up close to these photos, you'll see. Uh, there's an indication right there. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it in there for you. Remember, I'm exaggerating now. So you can see where it goes, and then you go back and smooth it. Okay, I'm working my way down. There's an ankle in there somewhere. I'm going to find it. <laughs> See if I can find my wire. Oh, there it is. Okay. Where the wire is, is the very bottom of her foot. So that means that there is going to be a heel right in this area. And a whole lot more foot out the front. Voila, my foot, sort of. <laughs> okay, try to get it in there before you do the ankle, because you don't know where the ankle's going to be until that point. Smooth it all on. And it's pretty high right in this area, and then it flattens out to nothing here. So the way I'm seeing it right now, I probably have too much... Uh, it's too fat out the front, and it's not enough right here. So I'm going to build it up a little bit more by adding a tad more clay. Now we will do lots more detail on the foot, but I'm still looking for that wire. Yeah, it's right there. It's going sideways, so let's turn it towards in the center some. Okay. Okay, and if you've ever watched my other videos, you'll know sort of. The main rule of thumb, or rule, rule of ankle, is to put the inside ankle higher than the outside ankle. And that's pretty much all you got to remember to get it. It's sort of looking human, but to really do it nice, I'll show you some extra little trickies. First you're going to make a couple of lines across here. Then you make a big dip right in here. It goes up kind of, kind of far, but you don't want a big roll right here because this is a bone. So you want to put it right on the other side of it. And see how much more this wiggles around than up here? It's because we have no under armature in there. Remember what we did? We fired on some clay and it made it so much easier to work on. Did you notice? I didn't have to struggle on this stuff, but now I am. And I can feel the wire popping around in there and wiggling and making a bigger air gap than it needs to, but a lot of times just you know, plan out your piece first, and you can make this so much easier on yourself if you just put a little under armature on and fire it on with the embossing gun. 
Okay. Now we'll do the feet after I get the whole thing worked in. It's kind of rough looking right now, but that is essentially her, right like that. And let's see how it looks on our base. Make sure her, the hole on her foot is still opened up. Yeah, it's kind of nasty looking under there now, but when we're all finished, it'll be nice. Okay. Now, she's going to have to have her, arm, her leg back a little further. Up a little bit and back a little further to get that look. See? That's how she was. Okay. Now, I'm going to work on the um, this one arm right here that comes down. I'm going to add some more clay to it. Just a little bit, just down to the elbow. I don't want to complicate things yet because we've got breasts and head to put on and all that. So just put a little bit more on here so I can get a feel for how she's going to look and how it's going to lay. And we haven't determined the length of her arms yet. One of them right now is probably longer than the other because you know she's she's at an angle. So um, I'm going to probably have to cut off a smidge a smidge of wire on this side. Got a lot of working things in to do here. Okay, and I'm going to put her head on shortly. I'm going to put her head on before I can go and finish the whole top of her uh, rib cage and everything else because um, you really need to work in the neckline now and not wait to the last minute because that does alter things. I finished the head off. Whoopsie, I meant. Let me show you. First, you got to take the pin out. If I can get it off, we may have to take a break. Just oh, here we go. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to get it off there. <clears throat> and then you kind of want to squash the little thing down here in the center just a little bit more. I can't get it. Wrong pliers. These are cutters. They're different than a. I gotta make it smaller. There we go. Because she has a hole on the bottom. Now, if you had this on one of those little head balls that um, I have for sale, um, the hole on the top of the head would already be made because you would have taken it off from that direction, taking the ball out. But this is good enough. And at first, this head is gonna look entirely too small for this doll, but don't you worry. I know what I'm doing. <coughs> Okay. I'll patch it in. I also like really long necks on my dolls. That's real graceful. And I will have to trim her up a smidge because I've made her too fat in the middle. I can see it. Shoulders are too far out. Can't tell till you get the head on. <clears throat> Push it down a little bit more. Okay, I want to start smoothing it in. Try to have the head as finished as possible before you put it on the body. I used to do it the other way around. You know, do the head first, and oh, I was killing myself trying to make it match. It doesn't work that way. And this figure on this um, picture is looking down. So she's leaning over to this side. So we're going to put her face down now. Hair always box the doll up to where she just looks like a showgirl. Unless you have a smaller head. Just a tiny bit smaller. That does help, let me tell you. Put some more on the front. Bring it down a little bit more. See, it's starting to look a little better. Looked real tiny up there on that long neck, didn't it? <laughs> okay. All right, we're going to be doing some detail here. 
And what she has is, let me see. Okay, she's got a big tent right here. Comes down. And the shoulder blades go off this direction. They don't go sideways, people. They go off this direction. They end right about here, just before the hump of the ball of the shoulder. And you're going to have, uh, she's got a, I'll show you the picture again. She's got a huge dent right here. So we're going to put that in there. This clay right now is the best right now. It is so perfect. It's not too soft and it's not too hard. It's wonderful. And then you're going to have a line, this line right here. right here that goes to the corner looks kind of weird but she won't when we're done and the best thing to do is always sculpt the rib cage pretty much finished before you add the boobies because if you don't you won't have the right bone structure underneath and you won't be able to get something that looks like a realistic hang or a drape the way the boobies hang on it. So, and that may take a lot of clay. Look how much she has. Woo! <laughs> I have a tendency not to make huge boobies on my dolls because this, you know, takes away from it all. But we're going to give them just like they are in this picture this time. And I think I'm going to need more than that. Let's try it again. Add a little more clay to it. And see how far down they are hung? They go way down. And then because her hand is up between the two, it's going to be pushing against this one. So And it's pushing down on this one. So this one's up, this one's down. So holy Toledo. This ought to be interesting. Okay, Let's squash it in there. Put it up a little higher. Okay, and you're going to be able to tell where it really goes once you bend the elbow and add some clay to this. But we're not quite ready for that. See, it's going to be up like so. It's hard to get it to lay down right, too. But uh, we'll show you some tricks. Okay. And I'm not seeing any of her underarm anywhere in there, so it's cut into about that far. And the shoulder looks really big right now, but it's not. What, what the situation is, uh, when I get the arm on, it'll fill in that part right there. Let's put a little bit on and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I've got this exaggerated once again, like I say, um, just to show you where it all goes and stuff. Um, so, bulbous. We're going to flatten that some. Okay, the way her, her line is, it, it goes down and then out again. So, she has a, let's see, let's put it right here. Out a bit. Down. And flatten this just a smidge. and out. It's easy to manipulate it at this point. You don't have to worry about all kinds of little boo-boos and messing it up, but uh, just don't spend a lot of time detailing. That's what I'm saying, because things change. You might have to move that arm, and it's not going to look right there, and you have all that time you wasted on that one little area isn't going to work. Okay, on the other side, um, sh this is, you really can't see it. This is not really good, um, blown up as large as it is. But um, there's a flattened section right here, which will be right in this area. And then the booby starts out here. It's a little further over to the side than you would think. I think this is a little too much clay. Hold on. Hold on, I'm getting there. Hmm. And 
her face is wider. I'm going to have to make some more clay on her cheeks. No biggie deal. We can do this. See, I'm not perfect. Oh God, I'm not perfect. I try so hard, but sometimes just can't quite do it. Okay, here we go. Flat area, like I told you. Right in that area. And it's round. The shadow, the way it is, you can see this real round. And so she, you've got a dark area up in here, which means that this boob is casting some shadow on the back side of it, just a smidge. So we're going to leave that open. Drape it more. We don't want pointy little mountains, folks. That is not the way a woman is built. Not even with add-ons. They droop some. And there's a lot of that going on. Whew. My goodness. Okay. I'm going to have to leave enough room for her arm coming through here. hand will be coming across there and her fingertips will probably come to about here so that means I need to add a little more bulk to her shoulder it's just a matter of a you know special relationship you know okay um, what affects what and I got clay all over me look at this okay so I bring her shoulder in a little bit more and the way it is, it's, it's, um, I don't know if you can see in the pictures over here, but she, in here and the one to the left, it's drooped down a little bit. So that's what we're looking for. Well, we're looking for a droop down kind of look on this doll now. And it is, it's working. I got it. Sloppy, but I got it. Okay. And here's a shoulder blade. Come back around here. It's like a V underneath there. You want to tap it up right here. My goodness, got lots of smoothing here. But it's looking good. We got all the right stuff in the right places. Except she got a hole under her armpit. <laughs> and when um, a body crease this is called a body crease when you ever do this kind of stuff. And to really clean these body creases up, because see how sloppy this is? Uh, you do the best you can. And then you go back and you to use this tool going away from the area. It just makes the sharpest, nicest line. Oh my gosh. This tool is wonderful. It's, uh, it's really for um, paint pickup. But the tip is a little stronger than most. You get a lot of them that are just kind of wiggly and uh, they don't have the oomph that it takes to move the clay. This one I found and had manufactured with my name on it. So I'm real proud of that one. Okay, that is a body fold. And then you're going to use brushes in there to clean it up and stuff. Okay, and then underneath. Your, of course, your shoulder blade's not going to go all the way there. It kind of angles out somewhere over in here. And it won't be that protruding either when it comes down to it. Like I said, um, indicate, don't exaggerate. Well, I've exaggerated here to show you where it was. All right. See, you just take your time, feather it all in. Okay, I'm moving right along here. Yeah, these are, they're tricky. She needs more forehead out the top, too. Okay. Let's see if I can get a little indication where ribs are. She has in these photos, if you'll notice, she has um, where her bend is. She's got a twist in her body, so she's going to have some more body folds. And they're on this side over here. So once her arm is down where it needs to go, which comes out like real close to the body, right there. 
I haven't got it yet. I'll give you more indication that that's a twist in her body. So you might have to build up a little more tissue in there, which I think I'm going to, and it's up higher, just a little bit higher. She's got a deep one right here. I know I don't want to put anything really, you know, big like that or deep like that because it makes it look fat and I'm trying to keep all my dolls kind of thin. But you can see where that's going. That is a body fold, a body twist. There's another one here. I'm exaggerating once again. And I will make them thinner and smoother. Okay. Okay, well you get the you get the drift. And then everything else is pretty much done with your your brush. You gotta go and see it's a hard edge. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little hard edge on that side, and you can see a hard edge. Now watch, when you smooth this out with the brush, you're gonna get rid of the hard edges, and you're gonna still leave the body fold there. You gotta go up this way so the camera can see it. Feather, feather, feather. That's the trick to it. It's a little better, but it's still not to my liking, of course, because I'm picky. So picky. Mm. Hard to live with me, <laughs> wouldn't you think? <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's a nice little body fold. Okay. Move around. Let's move her towards the front. Put some more arm on her. Feeling all the little spots now. This arm is going to be easy. This other one is going to be a bear. But the hand on this one will be easier to make than that one. Because see, on this one, the way it is in the photos, there's a little bit of space. If I go back to the photos right here. You can see a little bit of space between the fingers, and there it means there's a little bit of gap of, of um, air or space between the hand itself and the actual leg. The, the fingers just touch the leg. So that is going to be tricky. But the hand on this one's going to be a piece of cake because it's flat, totally flat. Okay. Okay, we took a little break and I fattened up her face. I left the features as they were. And uh, let's see. Just fatten it up a little bit. And she had um, not enough forehead, which is classic. Everybody does it, even me. And you have to add some more forehead to make it go. So now her head fits perfectly to the body. Needs some serious smoothing, but not a biggie. Okay. I'm going to add some arm. Here's the fun part, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody, even me, dreads. <laughs> You can wrap it around, or you can do anything you want to to get it on. doesn't make any difference. No particular way to do it. I don't know if you've noticed, um, don't know if the camera shows it, but I always work with a piece of glass underneath me. That's what's making that little noise right now. And um, that way you can keep your area spotless. And any little piece of clay that falls is not going to mess up like your dining room table or your art desk or whatever. You can see it. This is a piece of window glass from an auto shop, auto sh auto glass shop. And um, it cost me around $30 because they had to bevel the corners and they did it to the exact size that I wanted. Um, and I think it's probably about 16 by... I don't know, 16 by 20 is the size that it is. So it's about the right size if you happen to want one. And then there's the little stand that I'm using here also to hold the whole thing up. And just think, my fingers would be all over her, smashing her little buns, if um, I didn't have this stand on it. It's, it's a godsend, let me tell you. And, um, you can get, it's an ornament stand, is all it is. And so I'm not pushing them, don't worry about that. All I'm basically saying is, you've got to hang your doll from something. I used to hang them.
from the ceiling, uh, you can go to like Home Depot and get this toilet chain <laughs> that goes inside your toilet. And it's gold and it's pretty actually. And um, I used to have it hanging from the ceiling, but I kept, I have a tendency to move furniture around. That's just what I do. I just can't stay in the same place more than three months. I have to move everything around. So um, I uh, had all these little wing and you know, little hooks in the ceiling that looked kind of gross. So finally I had to make a decision. I'll have to get a stand and carry it with me instead of having the hooks and the chains from the ceiling. Yeah, I go into my studio a lot of times and I got all these dolls hanging from in various stages of disrepair, I'll say. Um, and looks like Jeffrey Dahmer's refrigerator. A little body parts everywhere. So yeah, but this this stand is the best. It really is. Okay, I'm talking while I'm doing this because you can see just as well as me explaining what I'm doing. Okay, I can't half see myself. The light's not right. All right, when you turn your neck like so, she's going to get um, a muscle that comes right out here. I'm not going to put a huge one in to indicate it, but I'm going to put a little one in. And you put it up to where the ear starts. The ear is further back on the head than people have been doing it than I've noticed. And I'll make it even with the eye. Come out even with the bottom of the mouth or the corner of the mouth and just make a little round C and this line right here is indicated from the very front of the face to the very back of the head that's your half line and you're going to build up a little ear you, it, I don't really need to do one right now I'll do that later but um, I'm trying to show you where this thing is supposed to be in relationship with that so you've got your chin and your jawbone, and this comes up forward of that. See how it's going the wrong direction. Now I'm not going to make it real strong, sharp looking because that's masculine. Everything on a woman is toned down and smoothed out. And this part right here, it's like, let's just say your, your neck was a tube and it was sitting on top of those shoulders. There's a tube, you know, that comes all the way around like so. Well, it's going to be deep right in there. But then there's another muscle that goes over top right here. And we're going to put that in now. As soon as I find some clay. And sometimes I make them too big to start with, but you can always cut it down. Remember this little shoulder blade, not shoulder blade, but collar bone comes right to here, right before you get to the mound of this. So this kind of dips in right there. And this goes on up. Trapezius muscle. I know one. Oh, I know gluteus maximus and trapezius muscle. Oh, there's a few others I know, but not very many. I can't be bothered with that. I just know where they are. That's the important thing. See, anybody can sculpt. You just pay attention. It's just a matter of observation. It's not a matter of being super, super talented. I really, I really think anybody can paint or sculpt. But, you know, to the degree, you know, that some go. I mean, you know, they're a real artist, you know. But, okay, there it is. Pretty much right there. And I will make a mock ear, because we can't do that right now. A lot of detail on it. Because we haven't smoothed her face out completely yet. And always start with too much clay. I always do. And that way you can bend it up, bend it in the back rather, and make it higher. 
get something to work with and build the ear up. Because you don't want it laying flat on the surface of the face. It's got to stick out from the side. Can you see that from the side, the ear? Okay. And if you want to get real detailed, and I do, you want to go back and clean it all up. Oh, and another thing, a lot of people are making a mistake with this is a biggie, girls. That and the forehead. The forehead, oh, there's so many biggies. But this is a real biggie. Okay, the bottom of the ear, earlobe, right there, right? This space between here and where the jawbone starts should only be about an inch, probably, in real life. I have seen some that were three inches long on these dolls. And I'm like, what are you girls thinking? And guys, pardon me, just a little bit of one. See? The little dip, and then you go straight to the chin. That is all it needs to be. And that looks more realistic. Okay. I still say that too much. Okay. All right, let's work on this side. Uh, I'm going to turn her around to the back, and we're going to work on that arm. That is, technically, this one right here. It's, it's angled back, and her hand comes around this way. So um, there really isn't any bend at, to her elbow at all. It's kind of a lock in it, but since the shoulder's back, the arm is back. So I've got the arm kind of in the, the shoulder blade, shoulder where it goes, sort of. But um, yeah, we'll come back and fix this later. We haven't got to that part yet. If it looks like it needs work, it's because it does. You know what my work looks like when it's finished. I don't miss anything. So don't say, oh, Patricia's missing that part. We're not going to get to see it. I'll show it to you. All right. Now, the shoulders, hers on the pictures, don't droop as much as I prefer my style doll to be. I like a shoulder that really goes down. She's she's not muscular, but she's got a little more straight to the to the back of her to the straight to her shoulders. So I'm going to lower them. It's just my style. I like them a little bit lower. This is too high for my taste. To each his own. I will probably always make them like that. I just think it's more feminine when it's all put together. And once you finally figure out what makes feminine feminine, uh, you'll know. You'll see. Just things like that. A long, graceful neck. Not hard lines. Um, see, and the back of her neck looks a little big right through here. We haven't finished that out, so don't worry. It'll be good when we're done. Gonna push some meat up a little bit more into this arm. Remember, she does. She has her hand pretty much, her arm pretty much locked. So we're gonna add clay. She doesn't have it on there yet. And we're gonna do our elbow. Nice and quiet in here, isn't it? I remember one of my films I did, my dog was snoring the whole time underneath my feet while I was doing it. She's not in here today. We decided that wasn't especially a great effect. <laughs> so, And this, um, um, I don't know if any of you know it or not, but I'm writing for um, a fairy magazine. It's called The Fairy Magazine. Um, I'm basically doing little pieces of my book that I'm putting together. I'm writing how to sculpt and how to market your work and that kind of an article every every issue that they have. And um, it is so fun. I really, really love it. It's going to help a lot of people, a lot more people get interested in making dolls and actually learning how to make a living at this. Trust me, you can. I am living proof that you can make a living at dolls, and a good one. And don't think I didn't work hard to get here, girls. Yeah, 
Yeah, she's just too um, square-shouldered for my taste. She's pretty, though. I'm going to put a little in there because it's got a dent that I just can't get rid of or smooth out. I started working my way down the arm, but these things happen. You get sidetracked. Back to the arm. If you'll notice, let me show you my picture here. And it's kind of hard to see, but I'll show you when I do the doll and you'll understand it better. You um, have a little bit of a round bulb to this part right here. It's not totally round. This edge is not totally round. It's got a little flat area, but it's rounded right in here. And then there's another flat area that goes down and then it, it protrudes out and then goes straight to the wrist. So I'm going to be working on this part right here right now and I'm going to turn her around so you can see it okay she's got I flatten this some here just like I showed you on the picture just a little bit and then dent in right here I'm exaggerating now so that you can see where they are now if she were more muscle bound I would leave something to that degree you know pushed in but I'm going to just smooth it out all the way down and then smooth it from there down to here then you flatten out another area where the arm bends it's got a big dent right there it's higher right there and then we just start see once you get all the clay on there you can just pretty much just go straight down and you know where the the form is and just work it in you don't have to add clay you don't have to do anything. Okay. See, I just keep taking it away. It's flat on the front side. And there's depression here. Even probably more than I have, but that will do for now. See? Can you see what I did? Okay. Let me clean this up. I lost the wire somewhere. It's down in there. And her, she's, if you were to, and she is on the one arm, she's got the arm right up against her body, and when you do that, it flattens it all out, and it, it, the arm looks wider there, you know. So, try not to get your picture taken with your arm squished up against your body. It looks fat. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Body fold. We're going to feather this out. And this is going to be round on this side. Like I'm telling you, it's flatter on that. So when it, when it goes up against the body, this whole thing is going to flatten. See? It's flattening right now to be believable. Okay. Okay. Let me see if there's a good picture of a elbow. Okay. Right over here. Let's go look at this one. Uh, it looks like it's protruding some, but it really isn't because it's the same pose. And in this position, she's got a, a dent in there. So what it means, basically, it's locked, but she has a skin fold. Uh, um, and actually, um, it, yeah, it's got a lot of skin hanging there. So that's how the elbow fits into that piece of skin. When it's locked, you don't see the bone. And when it's in a bent position, you're going to see the bone. So we're going to put a little more flesh back there to give her what looks like loose skin. How disgusting. But nevertheless, she's got it. And remember, your elbows, we had this on another lesson, a proportion thing, one of my other videos. Your elbows are basically at your waist. And her waist, waist some women are pretty high. Everybody thinks they're way down low. Well, nowadays you can't even tell from where the pants are. They're wearing the pants. Who knows where the waist is? But they're up there. <laughs> okay, and you're going to have a little dent right here, and you're going to have that saggy skin right there, and a little dent on the other side because there's a bone. Look how pretty this is going to look. 
bent it just a little bit, but not much because she's got a. Let's see, bend it in more. She's got it straight. See now, if you're looking from the side, you're going to see the dent, and you're going to see the little bit of saggy skin. I could take a little off of that. I think they have plastic surgery for that now, in case it gets too saggy. Hmm. Okay. Then there's the wrist. It just worked its way right down into it. I didn't have to do a whole lot. Just turn it. Oh, I have a knife somewhere. I've got a little much skin right here and a speck, which you're very, if you're careful and you stay on your glass and you don't handle your um, clay uh, with dirty hands or anything else on your hands, then you will not have a problem. Okay, with all the dirt and stuff. Okay, and there's where the wrist comes. And we have, let's see if I can find a picture. Um, Let's see. The thumb is out towards the front and the four fingers are towards the back. So I've got my four fingers going the right direction, but I have to finish this before I can put the thumb on. So uh, I'm going to go off camera for a little while and work on these little globby places and clean them up so I can show you the detail on the fingers and then we'll work on the other arm and we'll do toes before you know it. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is put a thumb on this doll. And you, thank goodness you don't have to worry about the underneath side of this doll, this hand, because it's going to be covered up with her butt. <laughs> okay, so I hope you can see this. I'm just working it in right now. And doesn't matter if it's too fat or whatever. You can pull on it and make it thinner to make it fit. All right now, um, the way I do this, um, we want to pin this hand. Let's, see, let's get the picture. Pin the hand to the side of the leg. All right. So um, what I'm going to do is I've got a little wire here with a loop in the end of it. And if I can find where the actual armature is on the inside, I'm hoping I'll get it. Let's see if this works. I've done this before and it worked. Guess what? It works. <laughs> so now you don't have to worry about struggling with it and trying to sculpt it while it's sticking straight out on the sides. And That's it. That's got it. Okay, I'm going to turn her around a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. And you notice I'm using the sculpting stand, and in no matter how clean you are, you're going to pick up little specks. Look at them. So you got to sit there and clean them up before you fire it. Get the big ones anyhow. Um, after you fire it, you know, of course, you can um, sand it and get a lot more of them out. But it's better to get the bigger ones now. Okay, thumb's too low. Well, darn. These things happen. Okay, we've got a little wrist, a little bone on the side where the wrist is. I know I've been gone um, a little while and this doll's gotten a whole lot further along since you saw it last and I'll explain everything that I did in just a few minutes. Let's concentrate on this hand first. Ooh, now that's a thumb in it. <laughs> we don't really care how long it is at this point. We can just cut it off anytime we're ready to. I still see my wire, so I want to push it down a little bit further. And since I did that, it's going to leave a low spot. I have to build up again. Because the wrist turns there, and there's a bone. Yeah, you got a line across the side, like so. And like I said, you know, every time I go off camera, I do a whole lot of smoothing. It's the only way, because we only have two hours to do this thing in. 
That's a shame. It's a shame we can't do this longer. Because I know you would really enjoy seeing the whole process. It doesn't take that long either once you know the anatomy. You just keep doing the same thing over and over and it gets easier. Okay, let's work on a hand. All right, go right down the middle. Her fingers are um, apart. Um, you want to go to the photo and show this? Fingers are pretty much apart, and I've decided since it's going to be really difficult to leave a space behind the uh, back of the hand, we're going to make it flush. It's just easier. We will indicate a space by using our little nail tool, which will go in there and give it a shadow. And that's all you really need. And then there's some smoothing out. Lots more smoothing out. Okay, now back to the fingers. Um, they're a little long for this, so I'm going to go like this. And don't bend down, don't push down too hard because you'll cut into the doll's leg and you'll try not to do that. I mean, it's all, everything's fixable, of course, but it just causes more problems. All right. We don't want real thick fingers, so we're going to thin it up. And the best way to do that is just cut it off the top. Thumb is still down too far. Hmm. Somebody needs to teach me how to sculpt, huh? <laughs> there we go. That's the right place now. Still too long. Your fingers taper. They go tiny on the ends. See? They um, are wider crust here than they are down there. And the whole hand is in an arch. Now I've showed this in my other videos, so I'm not going to labor on it in this one. I'm just giving you the um, basics of how to make this pretty and a bigger lady, because we already did it on them baby and we did it on a mermaid and we did it on a little fairy. Okay, that's about right. So I want it right down the middle. I can cut down pretty deep on this. Then I cut a little wedge because I want a little space between each finger. And get rid of the clay and then remember what I said. It's angled to where the fingers are narrow at the ends. So Looks like she's got pointy fingers, but there's a purpose in that. And then I'm going to angle this one. We can come back for that mess in the middle. Okay, and then I want to put a little bit more space in between those two metal ones. Make the next finger. Now remember, the other side of this hand, it's on an arch. So these lines are going to be, this one's going to be higher, and this one's going to be higher than the two st stopping points right there. Okay. Okay, it looks pretty good, except that little finger's kind of fat, but so here's what we do. We trim all the way down. This is the easiest way to make a hand. To make it right on the model. Or to make it on your, dra on your drawing board or your piece of glass. And get it just right and then stick it on the doll. And most of the time what I do, um, this is a different application. Um, most of the time what I do is I make them on the actual table. Uh, and. I, will, I put them on a doll that's been um, lightly fired. So, so, because sometimes the heat in your oven might be a little too much for real thin items like fingertips and stuff. So, you can actually carve the arm down just before you fire it the very first time and kind of like a pencil point, and then you um, fire it and you put the hand on it after it comes out of the oven. And after you've scraped too, because scraping is a big thing. 
We're not going to show how to scrape in this one. It's been recorded in other videos. And if you don't know what I'm talking about and this is the first time you've got this video or any videos from me, um, all I do is I just take the side of a blade, exacto blade is what I people use mostly, and after this thing is fired lightly at 220 degrees for nine minutes in a cool oven to start with. So actually you're getting firing time, you're only getting about five minutes because the oven has to heat up. Um, after you um, bake it like that in your oven and then open the door and let it cool down completely. Then you sit there for a long time and scrape. Um, now you've got a lot of detail and muscle tone and everything. It's harder to get around. So those areas you want to clean them up first before you fire her. Uh, then you won't have to scrape in that area. The big areas are the only thing that you can really scrape on. And you wouldn't want to do it on the face. You want to make sure that's totally detailed. That's why I put her on this so I don't have to hold her anywhere um, and I can work on her without making um, um, indentation. So that's how it works. And then, you know, I'm just explaining it for the people that don't have uh, any of the other videos. Then, after she's fired, you put the arms on, the hands on, and you'd put her back in the oven. And that gives you a real nice firm base to work on as opposed to all this wiggly arm, you know, where you, you're, you're struggling just to get the definition on it or just to get it in place. <laughs> and so, um, and when it's fired the second time, and that firing is at 265 or 270, it depend, depends on your oven, and it's for approximately 25 to 30 minutes, then you have a finished doll. And you want to put a little acetone on it and clean it up. And there's not much to it after that. The fun part comes then. Well, my fun part is the scoping, but a lot of people prefer the costuming more than anything. And it is fun. Sometimes I dread the painting. I don't know why I do that. I guess it's so darn tiny. And it's hard to get it in there, you know. And if you have a, um, a light that has a magnifier in it, like this one, or I've got one even better in my other studio, it's a Luxo. Oh my gosh, it's wonderful. It's an expensive light fixture, but it'll last me the rest of my life. See where I'm going with this? See, after I get it roughed in, then I carve off the excess I don't need and make it more feminine. Tiny wrist, tiny ankles. Um, small nose, graceful neck, um, curvy little body, all of those things contribute to a, a real pretty lady doll. You just can't get in a hurry now. And if you look at it from this side, you can see that it's, it's got problems. It, in, realistically, the arm wouldn't be this thick right in there, so I'm going to carve out some of that if I can while we're in the video. Otherwise, I'll do it off camera, but you know where I'm going with it. See, it gets messy. But I can clean that up, see? Okay, the other one. We've got the same situation. We've got an arm that comes across here that is going to be laying flat on her chest. So, the fingers obviously aren't going to be that thick. I'm going to flatten that out some and feather in the lumpy parts. Hmm, maybe, maybe not. Okay. And this is going to be the easy hand. That was the hard one, but we haven't put the definition in yet. I'm just trying to show you the basics of it right this second. Okay, um, working back from the elbow, the, the bone to this arm right here comes from this part right up here. It's hooked on here. Two other bones come down this way and hook it, hook, that's hooked in the middle. So you want to make sure that this protrudes some going this direction, not coming straight out and sticking out here, okay? That direction. And then what happens is you're going to have a little dent on each side, front and the back, or the underneath side, so to speak. And that's where the other bone is and where since she's bending her arm 
you're going to have an indication of a bunch of flesh right there puffing up. So, you see what I'm doing. Don't want that too thick. Okay, that probably could have a little more flesh up in there, but we'll get back to that and add it later. Okay, we're going to trim her wrist, and then I'm going to go for it. I'm going to make a hand. Let's see how much I got here to work with. Yep. And what's going to happen is um, I'm going to trim so much off of this that it's going to get real thin right there. I've got another little wire somewhere. There it is. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did on the other hand where I have to pin it to her. Just right there. So if you're lucky, you'll, you'll um, catch that wire that's on the inside. And see if I'm trying to do it right through the center, I'm, I'm destined to do it. It's not going to go anywhere. It's permanently on there. Okay. And fill in the blank parts. Okay, I'm looking at her sideways and it's really, really lumpy and it's kind of long. So um, I'm going to trim quite a bit more. I hope I don't run into my wire. Like I said earlier in this tape, when you put your arm up against your body, it flattens out. Well, that's the way it would be right there. Flat. Going to get wider. Maybe up next to the body real tight. Her fingers are obviously going to be too long. Let's whack them off. Here I go again with the cutting the little wedges out. And you just got to get it centered. Remember, they're narrow at the ends. So that means you're going to make V's go in this direction. And you know what? It's really easy to do the hands once you've got them in this position. And all that clay is out of there. You just tap down on the ends of them and round them out. And then put some little knuckles and things in there. And it's so simple. I've only got time to do one hand because we've still got feet yet. But um, So I will show you the best I can on this one. Remember, there's a, a bone right over here. Tricky. There's a bend of the thumb. You can take your, I had it, hardwood tool and push on the sides. It rounds them out. And this does take a long time. The hands, each hand, takes me an hour to do. Well, heck, I can sculpt the doll in about an hour, but her hands take forever. Faces, hands, and feet. Feet aren't nearly as bad as hands. Uh, these are really a bear. Flatten them out. Round up the ends. Put a little definition in them like they're going to be even smaller on the very tips. Really tiny. Flatness. See, see, once I cut a little bit off of there, see that? It looks like there's a knuckle right on that part right there. And this is where you really need your magnifier light. Whew. Big time. Okay, just let me do a couple fingers and then we'll work on some toes. And all this has to be smoothed down with a little brush on the interior. Okay, you're going to have um, a, an indentation right here, an indentation right here, an indentation right here. And they all go towards the wrist part. They do not fan out like that. They, they go in like so. But you don't, that's, like I said, exaggerated. So. And you got to start, you got that knuckle in the middle, and you got a knuckle here. 
Trying to get one or two fingers done. <laughs> okay. This tool is uh, one of the most important ones. And this one has a little flange that goes like so, skin fold. The front and the back right here. The first finger and the last finger. And I'm obviously going to have to make that wrist smaller and stuff like that. So, but... Once you get this down small enough, try to work with the fingers so they look natural. No hard lines. That's the whole key to sculpting. That and getting your proportion right. Oops, finger fell off. You can see why it takes me an hour to do these. Okay. I can't putz with it too much more, but there's the basic hand. And the rest is just playing with it and putting a little more detail in it, you know, like um, the knuckles and a little fingernail here. So little. God. But it's possible. And then take brushes and go around the outside edges, clean the whole thing up. I got this finger too long, now, didn't I? It's stretched out. Pretty much, that's the fingers, okay? Okay, so back to our base, all right? She's got an ankle, and I'm going to put a little more definition in that. If you'll, if you'll, I don't know if you can see it or not. I don't know if you have enough light, but I have a hard time seeing because the light's not down low enough. But this ankle bone comes around towards the front. And this is higher here. It's got like a little flange on the edge. And when you get to the front of the foot, you want to really narrow it down right here. She's probably got like size 13s on her feet. <laughs> Maybe not. I mean, I got eight like me. Okay, so um, once you get this little groove right here, trim it just a little on the sides so it's kind of like tapered, this being the biggest part right here in the front where your big toe is going to be, and all the way down to little ones. And it's, it's bad to cut on this. I should probably have a, um, hey, I know. There we go. Okay, got the big, big toe first. Remember, it's going to be bigger than the other ones. And toes are basically the opposite of fingers. They're bigger on the end than they are at the stem. So I cut a little off that. And you're going to want to put this little detail in here. And um, I think... Now, I've been asked to do it a few times, but a whole video on fingers and toes. Now, I guess that's possible. Somebody would want that because it's the, part, it's the hardest part to sculpt. And I've already done one on faces, so. Okay, just like the hand, you're going to have a little um, flesh fold that goes that way and one that goes that way, right there. Okay, now you're going to round out the ends of it. I'm going to turn this a little bit so you can see it better, maybe. Uh, round out the ends. And it takes time. Don't be in a hurry. Okay. And then, you want to take in the middle of... There's a piece of crap on the end of this. Um, middle of the, f the feet, the toes. And smash a thing down, like right here. Not on that one just on these three right here. And what it does is it makes it look like a knuckle that's up here. It's got a plane here, a plane here. And that will be good for the top of the nail bed. It goes right in this part right here. You're going to want to make a little nail like so. And I 
use this tool a lot. And don't make huge nails. And uh, so you're going to get like the nail bed here, flattened here, and comes out straight. And then the ball of the toe curls up on the end. I hope that you can see that. See, toes don't take that long. And it's the same thing as the fingers up above. You want um, a little indentation, just a couple. You don't want a whole bunch of a whole bunch of that because she looks like she's real bony. So. Okay, I'm making a going as fast as I can, and I'm still not fast enough for this tape. Okay, here's the big toe. Now let me see what happens if I take this off. Uh, no, that ain't gonna work. So what you gotta do is slide your thing underneath it, and then you can take it off. And that is the basics of a foot. You can spend a, probably another half hour cleaning it up and detailing it, but that is pretty much it. Um, the ankle, remember I said, it's up higher than the other, than the outside. This is the inside ankle. Okay. Well, next time you see this doll, hopefully, she'll be finished. Thanks for watching.